One of the, the people who inspires me, and I know that Angelina's worked with as well, is here today. Her name is Zainab Salabi. She's the uh, founder of a really good organization called Women for Women International. It, it, it's an organization that supports uh, women and victims of war around the world. Thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. Um, you actually started Women for Women 18 years ago based on what you had seen happening to women in, in the Bosnian War. Absolutely. There were rape camps and concentration camps in Bosnia. Six rape camps? Rape camps where women were given numbers and when their numbers were called they had to go and get gang raped. And girls, this included girls as, as, as young as 8 years old and women as old as 8 years old as the movie showed. Mm. The world knew about it. Journals were able actually to even go to some of these camps and take photographs on it. It was on the front pages of Newsweek and Time magazine. Yet we watched it and did not do anything. And I think we have a choice. When we watch such, such atrocities, we're talking about the past in Bosnia, but things like that are happening in Congo. Well, that, well that's the thing. I mean, it, these things are still happening today. Right. I, you, you and I have worked together in Congo, yeah. Democratic Republic of Congo country. It used to be Zaire. Angelina, I think you've been to, yeah. to Congo as well. Yeah. In eastern Congo, I mean, there's, it is the deadliest conflict since World War II, and virtually no one really knows much about it. Yeah. Millions of, of people have been killed or died of malnutrition. Mm -hmm. And, and tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of women have been gang raped. Yep. Often in war, and, and particularly in Congo, women are targeted because if you destroy the woman, you destroy the family, and you destroy the village. So women are raped in front of their entire villages um, and, and often then kicked out by their husbands. Absolutely, and that happened in Bosnia as well. You usually educated women, the teachers, the schools. No, that's one part of the story. The story is by far does not stop at the women being victims, but really continues. They move on. They are amazing, courageous, resilient women. We, you see, we understand war only from a frontline discussion, which is what men experience of war, the fighting and all of that, and women as victims. I argue that we need to understand war from a backline discussion, what women do to keep life going. Mm. One of the things that Women for Women does, which I think is so cool, is you can actually sponsor a woman somewhere in the world and communicate with that person. You get a letter back, they write you a letter, you can write a letter to them. And I think that, that bond is very powerful. Absolutely. Someone in the midst of war is getting a letter from an American woman and $30 a month to encourage her to, go, to, to support her going through an educational and vocational training program so she can get a job at the end of the year. And that's womenforwomen.org. Womenforwomen.org. We'll also have that information on our website at andersoncooper.com.